We hope you enjoy today's message on Acts chapter 2 verse 38 preaching channel. Please like, comment, subscribe, share, and hit the bell to help us grow. And if you have your Bibles, I would like to direct your attention to the book of Acts chapter number 1. Man, Acts chapter number one and verse number six. So glad for all of our guests that are here tonight. Good to see um, Jada and Cyrus. God bless you. Love you so much. Good to see Tony and uh, God bless him, my friend, his daughter. Good to see Andrew and, and there's a lot of other folks here. I just, we may not have your name, but we're so glad you're with us in the house of the Lord. Amen. The book of Acts chapter number one. If you have it, say amen. Verse number six, the Bible says of the disciples and Jesus, when they therefore were come together, they, that is the disciples, asked of him saying, Lord, this is the question that was on their mind. This is after his death, burial, his resurrection, just just prior to his imminent death ascension into heaven, this is what was on their mind. They asked of him, saying, Lord, wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? And he said unto them, it is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father hath put in his own power. He was very nicely saying, that's none of your business. But he did, didn't stop there. He did say, you, your, your question is, you know, it's misdirected. But there is something I want to answer. There is something I want to give you direction on. Your question about timing and the state of affairs of our country, the politics, Rome and Israel. That's my department. But verse number 8 This is yours, but he shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And it's not just power so you can feel warm and fuzzy, although it sure feels good. Anybody glad for the Holy Ghost? I'm glad for the Holy Ghost. But it's not just for that. You're going to get that power so ye shall be witnesses. Everybody say witnesses unto me. This is your department. Unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. And I'll go ahead and give you my title now. I just intend to preach on this. You're asking the wrong questions. You're asking the wrong questions. Let's pray. Let's ask that God would speak to us. God would talk to us tonight. I know he's here. How many know he's here? Jesus, we love you. Thank you for the presence of the Lord that's been here throughout the whole day. God, into prayer before service and worship. And now in the preaching of the word, I'm asking you to meet us powerfully. Talk to us. Speak direction for 2021. Oh, God, let this be a direction-setting moment. Give us your insight, your thoughts your vision, your understanding. We give you praise and glory in Jesus' name. And everyone said amen. Amen. And God bless you. You can be seated in Jesus. The disciples' question in verse number 6 can be a little bit uh, cryptic if you're not up to date with the context Uh, of the question the disciples asked Jesus they said Lord wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel the reason for this question is that Israel at this time was not a sovereign nation it it was a sovereign nation but it was not an independent sovereign nation the country of Israel was was under the the boot if you will, of the empire of Rome. Rome had conquered Israel and assimilated it into 
the Roman Empire, the powerful Roman Empire. Well, you can imagine the, the feeling of the disciples. This had happened about 100 years before 63 B.C. is when Rome conquered Israel. And the disciples, along with the rest of Israel, were waiting for the day that they would have independence from Rome. In, and not only that, but uh, the Israelites, and specifically the disciples that we're talking about now, had an expectation that the Messiah, when he came, would set them free from Rome. At least part of their view of the Messiah is that he would be a, set up a secular kingdom. And again, it had been about 100 years, if I have my timing right, that Israel was under the, 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 uh, the dominion and the reign of the Roman Empire. And so, again, with that understanding, I'm going to ask, uh, read the question that they asked again when they said, Lord, will you at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? You've, you've died on the cross. You blew our minds when you were resurrected from the tomb. We are amazed at what you've done. Surely, God, surely it is time for you to reestablish the Israel uh, that we, we, we've been looking for. They were believing that the time had come for Rome to be thrust out, that Jesus would set up the kingdom of Israel as an independent uh, kingdom. And so their question was about timing. It was about, uh, are you going to do it now? <laughs> are you, we've, we've waited long enough, a hundred years, a century is surely Surely long enough. And uh, the question is about timing, but it's also about the politics of their day. It's about their country. They were concerned about their country's direction. Does anybody feel their pain tonight? Implied in their question was the idea that God could fix this if he would. Implied in their question is that, Jesus, you have the power. You you, uh, you told us that all power in heaven and earth is yours, and will you now deliver us from the Roman rule, from the boot uh, of Rome, from the heavy taxes, from the tyrannical rule, from the iron fist of the Roman Empire? And so the question, Lord, will you restore now the kingdom of Israel? It's about timing. It's about politics. And it's very focused on Israel. They, they are not at this point very much concerned about anybody else. They're not all that worried about any other countries. They're not all that worried about Rome for sure. This question implies a, an inward view. They were they, an introspective view, a local provincial view. God, when are you going to fix our problem, the timing of our politics, our country, and its direction? But Jesus answers them, but not in the way that they thought he would. He's polite. But as only Jesus can, he firmly tells them, this is none of your business. He tells them that this timing of this question of timing, he says, when it comes to times, when it comes to seasons, that's not for you to know. It's not for you to know. And it's interesting, the Bible lets us know that a lot of times, the Bible and Jesus specifically would tell us that, that when it comes to timing questions, the Bible doesn't usually give us answers on those. One exception that comes to mind is in Daniel when his, his 70 weeks and so on. There's some very specific timing that he gives. But really, uh, it seems like his, his timing makes more sense when you've got the benefit of looking backwards. And that's the way most prophecy is. Most times... God does not give us times. And, uh, and, and there's been a lot of people that have made very specific predictions. How many are old enough to remember the book, 88 Reasons the Lord is Coming in 88? Amen. This was a big deal, a prediction that Jesus was coming back in 19 and 88. He did not come, but I do want to tell you he is coming back. He is coming back. But, but the Bible does not let us know when he's coming back. In fact, it says of that day, no man knows the day or the hour, not even the angels of heaven, 
but my Father only. That's in Matthew 24 and 36. In Matthew 24 and 44, the Bible says uh, that Jesus said, Be ready, for in such an hour as you think not, the Son of Man cometh. What he's saying is, I'm not going to give you dates that you want. Wouldn't it be nice if the Bible had a calendar at the back, you know, next to the maps that laid out exactly when the rapture was going to take place? Can I tell you the Bible doesn't do that? And very likely it's because he knows us. Amen. There's some of us that would wait if he's coming back on midnight of whatever, July 19th. Let's use that because that happens to be my birthday. If, uh, if, if he was coming back on that day, there would be a lot of us that would wait until 11 p.m. the night before, before we repented and, and got things right with God. And he says, I'm not going to do that. No man knows the day or the hour. Mark echoes this, uh, that, that there's not a timing he's going to give when it comes to the rapture. In Revelation 3 and 3, it says that, that he, he says, I'm coming as a thief. In 2 Peter 3 and 10, he says, I'm coming as a thief in the night. The point is, a thief does not uh, advertise when he's going to come and break into your house and steal you blind. And when God comes back, he is coming in a moment that we know not. He looks at the disciples and says, timing questions are mine. They're not yours. That's none of your business. The Father hath put that in his own power. And everyone said amen. amen. This word power, when it says the Father's put it in his own power, that there's a few words in the Bible that refer to uh, the Greek words that can be translated as power. Two of them that are used most often perhaps are uh, ekousia and dunamis. This one is the first. Ekousia refers to uh, dominion. He's saying this is this is the Father's authority. This is the Father's department. This is his jurisdiction. It is, it is his power and authority. When it comes to timing questions, this does not belong to you. Now, I, I, I really feel like God gave me these verses a few a couple of weeks ago when I was thinking about this upcoming new year. I was thinking about 2021 in context of 2020, and my question was, Lord, has anybody asked this question, will 2021 be a better year? Maybe you've not said it, but you have wondered it, and if you say you haven't, you're lying. Amen. And I, that's not to imply that, that God was not good to us in 2020. Amen. There's, but, but when it comes to some of the, 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 the realities of the year, the the, the details of a of secular life, of living life, the pandemic, politics, all of that, uh, it's, been, it's been a deal. But I want to say again, God did keep his hand on us through 2020. And I know some of you that I'm talking to experience great pain. Some experience loss. But can I tell you, God has kept his hand upon us. And one of the things we're feeling in this house tonight is the everlasting arms of God that are underneath us. And I, for one, am so thankful that God has kept us by his power. Amen. 2020 was an interesting year. But I want to remind you and I want to remind the devil that God did some great things in 2020. Amen. I thank God for the souls that he filled with the Holy Ghost. I saw David Hernandez out there. God, he was filled with the Holy Ghost. And where you at there? David, won't you stand? David got the Holy Ghost. He was baptized in Jesus' name. Last one to do it in 2020. Amen. Little Paxson Lee, I don't know if he's here or not. Paxson got the Holy Ghost, got baptized in Jesus' name. And David Coronado and his, uh, got the Holy Ghost, got baptized in Jesus' name. Sister Socorro, your brother Richard, got the Holy Ghost. Uh, Isaiah and Kezia Allende both received the Holy Ghost, baptized in the name of Jesus. Uh, my friend Yvonne that I've been teaching a Bible study to, he got the Holy Ghost, uh, was baptized in the name of Jesus. Uh, brother Keaton prayed back through. Alex uh, got the Holy Ghost, was baptized in Jesus' Jesus name. Sister Sarah Nolan on the front row got the Holy Ghost in 2020 was baptized in Jesus name. Just a few of these. Daxon Reichard got the Holy Ghost was baptized in Jesus name. Patricia Rodriguez. Every one of these ought to make somebody shout and devils run. They got the Holy Ghost in 2020. Robert got the Holy Ghost. Cindy Rolf prayed back through to the Holy Ghost. Sister Ginger prayed back through. Sister Rosemary you feel like shouting in Jesus 
Jesus' name. Little Alex Santiago got the Holy Ghost. My daughter Avalyn got the Holy Ghost at home. Sister Gabby Rios got the Holy Ghost, baptized in Jesus' name. Sister Michaela Farnell prayed back through. I'm here to tell you, there may have been some goofy things, some sad things we went through, but God kept his hand on us. He's a mighty God. I feel like great things have been done in spite of it all, and it'd be right if we gave him great praise right now. Somebody ought to lift your voice and thank God for what he did for keeping his hand upon us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You can be seated, and I don't know about 2021. I don't know all the details, but I do want to tell you I feel a Holy Ghost excitement about 2021. Oh, yes, I do. Devil, you're a liar. I rebuke you in Jesus' name. Amen. COVID may continue, and we're going to be smart about it. I don't know what's going to happen. You don't know what's going to happen. Some of those timing questions, you have no idea. That's my whole point of my message. I'm blowing it right now. But I'm here to tell you, 2021, Jesus is in control. And I will tell you this, it's going to be a year of revival, a year of growth. Brother Julian, you had it right. The gates of hell shall not, will not, did not, never will prevail against the church. It's going to be a year of expansion on the left hand and on the right. 2021, a year of ingathering, a year of evangelism. A year of harvest from all those Bible studies we've been teaching. Can I hear an amen? I feel a year of reaping, a year of blessing. You sung it tonight, ensemble, a year of God's favor, a year of God's smile. I believe 2021 is going to be a year of the backslider coming home, the prodigal coming to himself. The lost sheep returning to the fold. The lost coin being reclaimed. Come on, sister. 2021, I believe, is going to be the year where somebody says, my husband was saved in Jesus' name. Come on, sir, 2021, I believe, can be the year your wife comes to truth. It can be the year your children repent, are baptized in Jesus' name, and are filled with the Holy Ghost. I want to preach to every spirit that has the guts to listen. I don't think there's many out there right now that's in this place, but I rebuke you, Satan, listen to this. 2021, it's going to be a year of healing. It's going to be a year of the miraculous. It's going to be a year. Yes, it will. A year of the supernatural, a year of the anointing, a year of the Shekinah glory of God filling this house. I preach tonight it's the will of God for 2021 to be a year of deliverance for the alcoholic, a year of chain breaking for the addict, a year of freedom for the bound, a year of liberty for them that are bruised. Hallelujah. I don't care what the past has been. I don't care what you've gone through. I still tell you that God is in control and I preach 2021, a year of hope, a year of faith, a year of power, a year of love, a year of joy, a year of peace, a year of your promise being fulfilled, a year of prophecy coming to pass, a year of the word from God being done, a year of prayer, a year of fasting, a year of worship, a year of praise, a year of shouting, a year of dancing. Hallelujah. I believe it's going to be a great year. And if you believe that, you ought to stand to your feet. You ought to lift your voice. You ought to clap your hands and give God a shout of triumph. Come on, that's it. You need to hear it. The devil needs to hear it. The world needs to hear it. Jesus needs to hear it. Hallelujah. I'm going to preach here tonight, but right now somebody ought to give a praise out of faith. You ought to give a shout before the victory comes. Young men, you ought to praise God. Use that strength to praise him. Oh, come on, sister. You ought to shout. You ought to praise God. Brother and sister, you ought to magnify him. He's able. Clap your hands. Give him praise. 
oh, this is right. This is apostolic. This is right. You ought to do this. Give God some praise. You ought to praise him for your husband being saved. You ought to praise him for those grandchildren coming to an altar, repenting, getting the Holy Ghost. You ought to praise him for that backslidden friend coming back to church. You ought to praise him. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on one more time. Clap your hands and give him some praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. As you make your way back to your seat, I've come to tell somebody that God is in control. Look at your neighbor and tell him God is in control. Amen. Now, let me tell you, my question to God was, is 2021 going to be better than 2020? And I, I'm going to tell you the truth is when it comes to politics, I have no idea and neither do you. If you really think you know, after all we've been through, you might, I don't even know what to tell you. When it comes to our country and direction, and I love the United States, it may get better, it may get worse. I'm sorry to say that biblically, when I read my Bible, societies, politics, nations, and people, it generally has to get worse before it gets better. And so the other day when I was asking Jesus, How's 2021 going to be as far as, you know, just some of the stuff I'm tired of dealing with? I feel like Jesus politely but firmly said, that's none of your business. It's not for you to know. It's God's department. Can I tell you, it's God's department. It's not your department. Honestly, that ought to comfort somebody. Amen. The, 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 the deal is, that's not us. That is not ours to figure out. It's his department. When it comes to timing, when it comes to politics, when it comes to Rome, when it comes to Israel as a sovereign nation, when it comes to the direction of our country, it's not ours. It's his. Can I be blunt? Don't get sidetracked by what Governor Newsom is doing. That doesn't, that doesn't mean that you don't vote. That doesn't mean that you're not a good citizen. It, it, it just means there comes a point where you talk about it. We all talk about it and work our way through it. But that cannot be that, that Biden and Trump, wherever you stand, are your priority. Talk about politics, but don't let it be your breakfast, lunch, and dinner. I know, and you know, there is government overreach happening. Amen. But don't let that be the focus of your life. Civil liberties are slipping. The Constitution is being shelved. The Bill of Rights are being shoved into a back corner, and that should concern you. But that is not your dominion, your power, your authority. It's not your department. That doesn't mean you don't care. That doesn't mean you don't vote. But at the end of the day, you cannot control it. Rome came and took Israel over. I could go through history, and at the end of the day, it's not the church's department. It's God's department. My Bible says our God is in heaven. He hath done whatsoever he pleased. That is God's dominion. I've been saying it for nine months, and I want to say it till you get it. Leave it in God's hands. Doesn't mean we don't care. Doesn't mean we're disinterested, but the Bible says, Thine, O Lord, is the greatness. Thine, O Lord, is the power. Thine, O Lord, is the glory and the victory and the majesty for all that is in heaven and in the earth is thine. Thine is the kingdom, O Lord, and thou art exalted as head above it. In the book of Daniel, it says that God removeth kings and he sets up kings. Did you hear me? God puts up presidents and God takes down presidents. Again, that doesn't mean you don't vote and you don't vote as a Christian. Doesn't mean you don't care. But at the end of the day, you got to back up and say, God, that's your department. Church, we are not a political society. We are ultimately not a political group. We are Christians that believe the Bible is the word of God. Everything we do is flavored with the word. 
Our marriage is flavored with the word. Our view of marriage is flavored with the word. The view of innocent life is flavored by the word and directed by the word. Unborn babies, we get our understanding from the word. But at the end of the day, we are Christians. We are Christians. We are not politicians. We are not patriots alone. We are Christians. We are we leave it in God's hands. That's his kingdom. That's not to say we don't vote and don't care, but Jesus is saying, that's none of your business. And you can do all you want, but at the end of the day, he'll put who he wants up and he'll take them down if he wants. You can do all you want, but at the end of the day, there's a God that sits in the heavens, and he is the king of kings. He rules and he reigns. That ought to comfort somebody. That's his dominion. That's his kingdom. That's his rule. Somebody ought to clap your hands and thank God that he knows what he's doing. Hallelujah. I hear Jesus very politely saying, good question, but that's none of your business. That's not yours. That's the Father's business. That's God's dominion. He rules and he reigns. You're never going to push past the will of God when it comes to that area. Look at history. Look at history. But I heard it tonight, Brother Riker, to you heard it from Bishop Wilson today that the kingdom of God is not based and its success is not based on the kingdoms of this world. Jesus said, you're on another kingdom. You're, you're, you're working on another thing altogether. That's not your department. That's mine. But then he says, there is another area that belongs to you. You're asking the wrong questions. How's 2021 going to be? What's it going to be like? When's Corona going to end? Will it be March and April? Will it be with the vaccine? I want a date. Tell me when, please. I don't want 2020 again. Jesus is saying, that's not your department. But then he says, but I'm not done with this conversation. You're asking some questions I, about power and authority. I want to tell you, I'm going to give you some power. I'm going to give you some power. Now, I don't know about you, church, but I want the power that comes from God. I don't know about you, but I don't like feeling helpless. I don't like feeling hopeless. The problem that some of us are feeling the helplessness over is we're too concerned about the wrong arena, the wrong realm. We're worried about his area, and we need to be paying attention to ours. Jesus said, that's my power, that's my authority. And then he says, but there is a question you should be asking that I'm going to answer even though you didn't ask. You shall receive power. Now this power here is a little bit different than a kuzia. It's not talking about authority in the sense of dominion or, or jurisdiction. This is, this is the kind of power that we're used to talking about. It's might. It's it's in, in some places it's translated as strength. A lot of times this word dunamis is, is translated as miracle, as ability, as abundance. The Bible says that Jesus said, That's my department, but this is your department. You shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And I'm here to tell somebody tonight that Jesus still has power. And the power that he wants to give you is a power that will make you a witness. He said, I'm going to give you a power after the Holy Ghost is come upon you. To those disciples that all they could think about was Rome and Israel and a desire for liberation, concerned about their country. I care about my country, they said. 
When will we have the liberty we want? But the Bible lets us know they never really saw it right. And their opinion and view of the Messiah and what he would do did not get adjusted till a day called Pentecost. When the Holy Ghost was poured out. And the Bible lets them know or lets us know that they got the revelation the kingdom would be spiritual in nature. What I'm trying to tell us tonight is our department is we need to get full of the Holy Ghost. What was happening a little bit ago is not something, forgive me, for us to stand and watch and hope somebody else prays through. What was happening a little bit ago was for everybody in this house. You need to talk in tongues all the time. I need a renewing in the Holy Ghost all the time. If you don't get a renewing of the Holy Ghost, you'll be asking the wrong questions. If you're not washed in the Holy Ghost, you'll be focused on timing and politics. That's all you can think about. But I'm telling you, there's a washing of regeneration and a renewing of the Holy Ghost that brings power. It brings power. It brings might. It brings might. It brings the miraculous. If somebody ought to ask God, Give me that power. Give me that authority. Hallelujah. You can be seated. That's why in Mark 16, Jesus said, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Go, and he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, and he that believeth not shall be damned. And then he says, and these signs shall follow them that believe. These are signs that will follow people that go. When you go and you become a witness, uh, your name, uh, you, you will have the power as a believer that you can, in the name of Jesus, cast out devils. Uh, that in the name of Jesus, uh, you can speak in other tongues. Uh, let me stop and tell somebody tonight, if you didn't get the Holy Ghost a few minutes ago, you can get it right now and you can get it in this altar service. If you're here tonight and you need a renewing in the Holy Ghost, you can speak with new tongues. There's power for it. There's power for it. It's in this house. There's power to speak in other tongues. And Jesus said, if you are full of the Holy Ghost and you're going into the world, you'll have power that you can take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. This is our department. This is our arena. This is where we are supposed to be going. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You can be seated. I want you to hear me. The Bible says that these disciples, that they got an understanding. You shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you shall be a witness. Church, that's our department. Did you hear me? That's the question you should be asking. That's what you should be wondering about. That's what you should be thinking about breakfast, lunch, and dinner. That's what you should dream about. Soul winning. Souls going. You shall receive power. I'm telling you, there's power in the Holy Ghost. My Bible says that what is the exceeding greatness of his power to usward who believe according to the working of his mighty power. I'm telling you, we have not even touched the power that God has for his people. I'm here to preach to you tonight uh, that there's power we have not even dreamed about. Uh, The Bible says in Ephesians 3 and 20, Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. Uh, I'm telling you there's power in the Holy Ghost. Some of you that have been hopeless and helpless, and you feel like you're in a fog. You feel like when you pray, you're praying with a paper bag over your head. You can't even, you can't even get a hold of Jesus. I'm telling you, you want that power back. You need to get up and you need to go. You need to witness. You need to tell people about Jesus. You need to reach for the lost. You need to go. You need to go. You need to go. Let's lift our hands and let's love him right now. Hallelujah. I feel the Holy Ghost. I feel Jesus here. 
Hallelujah. I feel the winds of the Holy Ghost blowing out some, un, in, some weird thinking. I feel the wind of the Holy Ghost wanting to blow out some fear, some doubt. I, I feel like the wind of the Holy Ghost is here to help somebody. I, I feel like Jesus is here to give you a new focus for 2021. Quit asking about the timing of when's it going to end. Leave that in his hands. Leave it in his department. You shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And you shall be a witness. Some of you need to go and get you a Bible study chart. Some of you need to go and get you a Bible study. Some of you need to go knock on a, do- uh, a neighbor's door. Some of you need to text somebody you haven't texted in months. Some of you need to reach out to backslidden family and tell them Jesus is coming back. You got to come back to church. He's coming back. You got to be saved. Come on. Some of you need to go. You need to go. You want power be a witness. You want power? Be a witness. You want power? Be a soul winner. He doesn't waste his power on just anybody. He didn't waste his power just so you can feel some goosebumps on a Sunday night. He doesn't waste power just so you can feel warm and fuzzy. But you shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you shall be a witness. Come on, get up. Somebody needs to get up. Somebody needs to go. Somebody needs to pray. Somebody needs the fast. Somebody needs to get on fire. Somebody needs to win somebody to God. Come on, let's love him. Lift your hands and love him right now. Hallelujah. Jesus is saying the political problem is mine. But your power, your dunamis, your might is going to be spiritual. Spiritual. Come on, look at somebody and tell them, we're a spiritual people. Hey Amen. If I was an evangelist, I probably would have stopped right there, but I'm a pastor. i got to drive this home. 1 Samuel 17, David and Goliath. The Bible lets us know that Saul is looking at everything through a political prism. He sees Goliath. And he's worried about the politics of it all. But David is not concerned so much about the politics. He looks at this, this giant that's screaming in the face of Israel. And something stirs up on the inside. He gets so Holy Ghost indignant, if you will. Amen. When's the last time you got indignant about what the devil's doing? I I don't mean where you got depressed. I mean where you got upset and said... Like David said, this ain't a political thing. David said, is there not a cause? There's something higher. Come on, church. Why are we even here? What's this all about? What's going on? Is this a social club? Or are we here so we can just meet people and talk to one another? Is that why we have youth departments and Sunday school and Bible quizzing? No, I'll tell you why we have it. We have it so we can go and reach. There's a cause. There's a lost world. You shall receive power. Somebody say power. After the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And then he said to those disciples, listen, you'll go into Jerusalem. And Peter's listening. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. And a few verses later, the Bible says Peter goes to Jerusalem and the power of God hits him. He says, you'll go to Judea. All those apostles were listening and they, they did that. He said, you'll go into Samaria. I think I could, I'd be surprised if Philip wasn't in there somewhere. He goes to Samaria. He says, you'll go to the uttermost part of the earth. Is there anybody tonight that will take that up and go? I'm here to tell you, you want power with God? It's time for somebody to get up and go. God does not just give us power so we can do tricks. He doesn't give us power just so we can, you know, see supernatural things and brag about it. Amen. These signs shall follow them that believe after they've gone. Go into all the world. My dad gave me this scripture, Isaiah 32. It talks about the future prosperity of the church. I'm going to tell you, the church is going to prosper. The church is going to prosper. And the prophet prophesied, and he said of the church, He said, how blessed you will be, this is in the NIV, when you sow your seed by every stream. You know what he's saying? Plant the seed everywhere you go. And I'm almost done preaching, but I'm here to tell you 
the Holy Ghost is talking to somebody tonight. You've been asking the wrong question. You've been wondering about the wrong. Now listen, we all have those questions, but if it's the primary question, that's a problem. If that's what motivates us, is a problem. I'll tell you what we should be wondering about. We you know what your job for 2021 is? Go. Somebody say go. Go. <laughs> go ye into all the world. Preach the gospel to every creature. It's time for us to go everywhere. It's time for us to plant a seed by every stream. Can I talk to some young ladies? It's time for you to go to every house. Young men, it's time for you to go to every apartment complex. It's time to, for us to go to every HOA, every neighborhood, every community, every zip code, every unincorporated area, every town, every city, every region, every metroplex in the Inland Empire. They got to have somebody that goes. It's 2021. And I feel like the Holy Ghost is talking to somebody. He's trying to refocus you. Hey, 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 listen up. Somebody's got to go. You want power, Brother Armando? God's done incredible things in your life this year. It's a testimony to what God has done to see you standing here worshiping, shouting God, shouting, praising God. I believe God's got even more for you, buddy. Just keep on. It's time for you to go. It's time for you to find a Bible study. It's time for you to reach for somebody. Come on. Come on. He's talking to somebody. It's time for somebody to go to Rialto. It's time for somebody to go to Colton. It's time for somebody to go to San Bernardino. It's time for somebody to go to Bloomington. You'll receive power. It's time for somebody to go to Fontana and Muscoy and Grand Terrace and Riverside. Go, you shall receive power. It's time for somebody to go to Loma Linda and Redlands and Yucaipa and Banning and Beaumont. Ontario needs somebody to go. Rancho Cucamonga, Alta Loma, Upland, Covina, West Covina, Eastvale, Norco, Corona, Phelan, Hesperia, Victorville, Apple Valley. Somebody needs to go. I want us to stand to our feet. It's time for somebody to get your focus back. It's time for your pastor to get his focus back. It's time for every minister in this church to get your focus back. It's time for every usher to get their focus back. It's time for every uh, hostess to get their, uh, their focus back. It's time for every musician and singer, praise singer, choir director, music director, everybody in this place to remember why I'm standing there, Gentry, with this bass. This God has called me to go. Go and preach. Go and teach. Go and love. Go and give. Go and care. Somebody needs to go and pray. It's time for you, sister, to remember what it's about. Go and pray. I'm going to tell you, if you keep going, he will give you power. Go and help. Go and share. Go and testify. Go and disciple. Come on, I'm talking to somebody. Go and evangelize. Go and baptize. Go and heal. Go and cast out devils. This is where our power is. Hallelujah. These disciples said, Lord, when are you going to restore the kingdom to Israel? Do you know it did not happen for hundreds of years? And really, really, it didn't happen for about 2,000 years in 1948 when God reestablished them as a sovereign nation. I know there was ups and downs and some times throughout. And he says, that's my department. I'm not here to depress you. I'm not saying Corona is going to be around for 2,000 years. But I'm telling you, it's his timing. Did you hear me? It's his timing. Did you hear me? It's his department. What is our department? You shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Somebody needs to get lost in the Holy Ghost again. And when you do, you'll want to go again. You'll want to go again. You'll want to reach again. You'll want to teach again. You'll want to love again. 
Your pastor's done preaching. But if you've been asking the wrong questions, it's time for an altar call. In this altar, wherever you're at, it's time for somebody to go. It's time for somebody to reach. Your power's in another area. Your power's in another arena. You shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and you shall be witnesses. Come on, it's time for somebody to get washed in the Holy Ghost. It's time for somebody to get lost in the Holy Ghost. It's time for somebody to go, to go, to go, to go. Come on, I need somebody to pray. I need somebody to talk in tongues. I need somebody to get full of the Holy Ghost. That's it, sister. Lift your voice. That's it, young lady. Shout unto God. That's it, young man. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Come on, the Holy Ghost is one to move in this altar. That's it. The Holy Ghost is touching you. Come on, I need some men to get a hold of what it's all about. I need some men to get full of the Holy Ghost. I need some young men to pray the glory down. I need some young men to pray a focus back into your life. You shall receive power. You shall receive power. You shall receive power. Come on, I feel the power of the Holy Ghost. You shall receive power. That's it, sister. Come on. Let him give you that focus again. Come on, let him remind you what he called you to do. to go with fasting, but go, go, go. You may have to go with tears. Go, go, go. You shall receive power. You shall receive power. to pray one for another. I need some preachers to move through this altar. Come on, be sensitive. I need some sisters to pray one for another. Oh, that's it. Come on, there's a sovereign move in the Holy Ghost. 